I'm going to reflect briefly on how education might need to evolve to meet the challenges, the unprecedented challenges of the Anthropocene. Now, what is unprecedented about the situation is that our planet has left the stable conditions of the Holocene and we entered a, a, a time of uncertainty. Um, it's not entirely uncertain. We can predict to a reasonable degree what lies ahead. I'm one of those people who is extremely well informed about the literature on climate change and biodiversity. I've been an advisor to IPCC, IPBES, and other organizations. So I'm very well in informed, I must say, that to be honest, uh, I, ha I have to restrict these days my reading because it's the, the news is not good. It's psychologically, it's very hard, even for a very well informed person to truly accept that. And you sort of stand and you ask yourself, what am I supposed to do under these conditions? Because uh, it's, it's looking really quite bad. There's just one aspect there I want to highlight because it's not so often mentioned, that's extinctions. And that's the percentage of species that have lost more than 80% of their range, which means they're doomed. So a very high percentage aspect. So what can we do? I think um, what we need is geocentric education. That means an education that starts with the earth as, as the, the foundation of everything, the foundation of life of our very existence. Nothing could be more fundamental. And you should start from that. I think that's my, my message. And there are different aspects uh, to this uh, uh, fact or the, the, that different uh, uh, conclusions that spring from that uh, foundation. One is that uh, we need to educate for stewardship of the earth. That means we need to raise uh, or educate a young generation that identifies with the earth because that is who we truly are. Okay. It's not as if there's some boundary here that starts, you know, at your skin and then there's something else. It's not like that. We are just an intersection, an intersection. We are a composite of a million, of billions of cells and billions of atoms, trillions of atoms, and we are totally, totally a part of this. This is a different consciousness I'm talking about, who truly understand that is to be to, to shift your identity from from your concerns simply with yourself to concerns with the whole. Okay, mm. so it's a holistic uh, identity that needs to be cultivated. Not because it's nice, though it is very nice actually to to be identified with the whole. I believe is it the, the only way to be. But it's a matter of survival. We cannot exist independently. Mm. We must forget that idea of the panoptic eye for viewing uh, 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 nature from the outside and trying to control it. Our basic attitude must be one of respect because it's a miracle that nature works that it does. It's not something we don't understand. We understand it, but it doesn't make it any less a miracle. Just like, say, human beings uh, aren't any less just because we are only the, de the descendants of ape-like ancestors. It doesn't make us any less. We have to get rid of that only word, okay, when we think about science. Science really is there to reveal and to make us appreciate more the mystery of our own existence, not to diminish it. Okay. So that's respect for nature. The other thing is integrated learning because the problems we have today or we face in the Anthropocene are not isolated problems but they're systemic problems. And only through systemic thinkers will be able or enabled, properly enabled to uh, deal with those systemic problems. It doesn't mean we can't have specialization. We need that. We need experts with very specific, highly developed knowledge. But 
they must at the same time be able to see themselves and their place within the tree of knowledge, within, within society, and to, 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 to see where their knowledge is relevant and where it ends and where they need the expertise of others. So everyone should be educated to have special knowledge, but also to have perspective on where that special knowledge fits in and a readiness always to work with other people in teams, in interdisciplinary teams, and not just in the academy, but beyond. That means intersectoral. We have to more have more dialogue between science and civil society, in particularly uh, young people. And we need to have more dialogue with politics, with finance. And this is, I think, what the World Academy is trying to do, which is why I really like it. That's why I'm there. So the third thing I wanted to bring to your attention is the idea of collective wisdom. How do you create a society through education that has collective wisdom? That means everybody understands something about what is necessary so that our society, our global community, our local community can exist and be well, yeah, to, to experience well-being. So that means also that we have to question. But if you have problems, if you have let alone systemic problems, you must be able to question. So how do you question uh, the ground you stand <coughs> on, the water you swim in? If you don't even notice it. If you are a fish, you don't notice the water. It's just what water, you know? So how do you step out? And um, one of the things that my discipline brings to, to, uh, to this is the, the, the fact that we study other cultures. So we take ourselves out of our comfort zone we try to understand another way of life. And then we may even look back at our own way of life and say, oh, gee, why do we do that? You know, why did I always think it has to be like that when these people do it completely differently? So you have this, this opportunity to detach yourself and make unconscious assumptions conscious. But there are other ways of going about that, I think. And today, I, th I think many people are, uh, uh, you might say part-time anthropologists because they are experiencing other cultures, they move about a lot. So it's a kind of an anthropological moment in, in human history. So, but f in education, we have to question, especially the assumptions of modernism, and we have to give uh, uh, students at all levels time to deliberate and reflect on their values, their lifestyles, what is really important about them. And they should do it together. Yeah, to develop uh, this collective wisdom. The other thing is sufficiency. I think personally that the situation that the, the next generation will face is, is going to be very difficult. Yeah. And people will need practical skills, not just, it won't be enough to know everything there is to know about nanoscience. You need to know perhaps how to grow food basic survival skills. And mm. also, those survival skills are also grounding activities, yeah, like growing food, for example, something I make myself do because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, uh, an expert on, on food security, among other things. Uh, I make myself grow some food because I feel I need this grounding. I need, to, I need to feel it. I need to live it. I can't just tell other people what to do if I don't even try myself. So these kind of practical uh, skills are very important. And I'm worried because uh, a, a lot of young people are very alienated. Okay? They live in, in virtual reality. And if the physical reality catches up with us, that doesn't really prepare you. It's good to network. I'm not s trying to diminish the opportunities that lie there, and there are many. And connectivity is great. Um, but it's important that education also has some practical components, something that's grounding and uh, helps people to survive. And it should be done in, in a community setting. And that part of that also means that um, you have to reflect on what you really need, what is sufficient. 
and everything that's more than sufficient is really a burden, you know. <laughs> possessions you don't need if you as you grow older, your house, you know, fills with all these unneeded possessions. It's a burden, it is. Don't even accumulate them. What for? Keep it simple. Okay, final note, a little bit of advertisement for my discipline anthropology, which is a fairly holistic discipline. Um, and for social science more generally, I think social science would be very important. And it should be st stronger in schools uh, because those are the sort of integrative ways of thinking that people <coughs> need to contextualize uh, their knowledge, their specialized knowledge, and to, to, uh, to, to, to foster in them an awareness of their own place within the whole. And uh, by all means, uh, everyone should be celebrated for what they contribute, but it should be, there should be this identification with a larger project. I think that togetherness is, is what will see us through, nothing else. Okay, that's it.